What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com. So in today's video, we're gonna talk about how to create a geometry node setup where you can use weight painting to set where objects get scattered. Let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so we talked in the previous video, which I'll link to in the notes down below. By the way, you can download the example files for this series at thecgessentials.com slash geometry nodes. But basically, um, what we've done already is we've created a surface that's getting grass placed on top of it. Right, so that's a fairly simple node setup. But now what I wanna do is I wanna build another node setup that's going to allow me to randomly place some flowers and some rocks on this surface. Um, and then I'm going to set it up so that it only goes wherever I tell it to with weight paint. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to toggle the grass off and we're gonna jump over into a geometry nodes window. If you don't have a geometry nodes window, you can just click on the plus button right here and go to general geometry nodes. Basically what I want to do is I want to, but basically what I want to do is I want to start by selecting the surface I've created right here. Uh, one thing to note, notice how I have come in here and subdivided it. So there's a number of points on it, but I want to take that surface and I just want to add a geometry nodes modifier right here. And notice how when we do that, there's nothing in here. So we just want to come over here and click on the new button in geometry nodes. And so to start off, this is going to look very similar to what we did previously, All right? So we want to start by doing a shift a, and we want to add a distribute points on faces node right here. That's going to create your your nodes that go on these faces. We also want a join geometry. So I'm going to do a shift a and add a join geometry node right here. And we want to drag our geometry into our join geometry so that you can still see it right here. And so we want to add a shift A and we want to add an instance on points. And so note that I did talk about this more in depth on the previous video that I did, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, but basically what we're doing is we're just setting up this node so that we can add objects in here. And remember that we have a collection in here, or we're going to have a collection in here of things to scatter. So what we want to do is we want to add a collection info. So we're going to type in collection info right here. We're going to drag the geometry into the instance node right here. Okay. And so we want to make sure that we've created a collection of objects. So I'm going to add a new collection and I'm just going to call this um, flowers and rocks. And notice how what I have in here is I have a few rocks and flowers from the bag of pie collection. I'm going to take all of those and I'm going to drag them into the flowers and rocks collection right here. And then I want to set this up where it's referencing that collection. So flowers and rocks. And so remember that we need to make sure that we check the box for separate children and reset children so that these get placed in the proper location. We also want to make sure that we've got the option for pick instance set in here so that it's not um, setting every single one of these objects um, on top of every single point, right? So then real quick, we want to add our randomization. So we're going to do a shift A and add a random value. And we're going to place that random value into our scale over here. We want another random value. So we can just select this and do a shift D to duplicate. And we want to drag that into our rotation. And remember that we only want this to rotate in one direction. So we need to set this to vector. And then we're going to add a combine XYZ node right here in order to split that out. So we're going to take this vector and drag it into the max right here. Um, for our random value, we want to drag this into our rotation right here. And so remember that we can adjust that rotation by changing this combine X, Y, Z. Well, then we want some inputs over here because we want to be able to change this in our geometry node setup, kind of like this other geometry node setup that we have over here. So all I'm going to do, and so I'm going to start by dragging my density over here because I want to be able to set my density. I want to drag my random value minimum, my random value maximum, and my Z as well. And remember that you can rename these. So I'm going to set this to minimum rotation and maximum rotation. Actually, these are scale, minimum scale, max scale. 
And remember what that does is that just gives us the ability to set the minimum and maximum size for the random rotation that's in here. You could also drag the seed in if you wanted to. All right, so now we have the ability to adjust the density. We have the ability to adjust the seed in here if we wanna change the randomization. And we can set the minimum and maximum scale like this. I'll link to the video where we talked about this more in the notes down below. But what we wanna do in this case is we wanna make this a little bit different, right? We don't want this to place the flowers and rocks everywhere. We only want this to place the flowers and rocks where we dictate. And so the way that we're gonna dictate that is we're gonna jump over into weight paint mode right here. Remember what weight paint mode does is it allows us to paint weights on a surface, right? So it's basically applying a weight to that surface. So the blender looks at this and says, oh, where this is red, um, I want this to have a higher value than where it's blue. So we can use this in order to set our weight paint. So if we wanted to remove from this weight paint, we could just set our weight to something lower like this, right? So notice how I can paint this back out if I decide that I wanna do this. If I wanna add, I can go ahead and I can adjust that using this weight paint mode. So right now, all we've done is colored this up, but we haven't actually set any kind of math in here that's going to allow us to tell Blender where to place the objects, right? So the way that we wanna do that is we wanna go over to our object data properties right here. And notice how since we painted on the surface, there's actually now a vertex group that's set up in here. This vertex group is basically associated with this weight paint right here. So the data that we're painting in here is getting placed in this vertex group. And so what I could do is I could rename this something like placement right here. Well, now I have this vertex group that I can reference using my geometry node setup. And so the way that that's going to work is right now, Right, we have our distribute points on faces set as random. Um, we're gonna change it to this other object, which I'm not sure if I'm saying this right, but it's the Poisson disk. But we wanna go ahead and change it like that. Well, notice how when we do that, what that's gonna do is that's going to give us a density factor rather than a random factor, right? And right now, we're clicking and dragging on it like this. Well, we don't wanna click and drag. What we wanna do is we wanna click and drag um, a node out of here, and we wanna drag it over into our input right here. And what that's going to do is inside of your geometry node group, notice how now that density factor is going to show up. Well, for that density factor, we don't want this to be a value. We wanna click on this option right here. Well, notice how when we do that, it's going to knock all of this out, but it's going to give us the ability, if we click inside of this box, we can actually reference the point data for that placement object that we created. So instead of us, putting a value in here, we're going to reference it to that vertex group. Well, notice how when we reference it to that vertex group, now it's going to place objects wherever that vertex group is painted in here, like this. So you can use this to really quickly add these objects in here. You could also come in here and you could set your weight paint to zero and you could paint them back out like this. So. Um, it's actually pretty easy to do. And then one other thing about this is notice how right now our density node isn't working, right? Well, notice how in here, there's a value for density max, right? That density max is going to set how dense the objects are in here. And so inside of this geometry node setup, what you wanna do is you wanna drag the density max from your distribute points on faces into your density right here. Well, now, Notice how your density is going to adjust. And the other thing you could do if you wanted to is for randomizing this, you could drag the density seed in here. So I'm just gonna drag this over and we're just gonna call this object seed. And I'm gonna move that up using this arrow right here because I want this to be up near the top. You can use that seed in order to set the randomization. But now what you have is you have a tool that can randomly place objects wherever you weight paint inside a blender. So if I toggle my other geometry node setup and then I go back into object mode, notice how those rocks and plants are being placed just kind of randomly in this grass. And I want these to be a little bit bigger so you can actually see them. So I'm gonna bring that up here. I can adjust my density down and I could adjust my seed in order to kind of randomize this. And again, if you wanted to change it, you just jump back into weight paint mode and change it. And then if you do feel like everything's too jam packed in here, notice how that distance minimum right here um, that you can adjust is going to um, reduce the density of the objects in there. So you could bring that over here as an input as well. 
and then just move that up. So you can use that in order to reduce the number of objects that are placed in your weight painted areas. All right, so that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. If you have any questions about anything we talked about, I just love having that conversation with you guys. Again, remember that you can download this guide at the cgessentials.com slash geometry notes. But as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this and I'll catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.